So our program and goal. Authentic leadership pillars that we're looking to funnel into team performance. We're gonna start specifically with self-leadership and mindset. And then we're from there, we're gonna talk about how that goes into team building, to building and optimizing an effective team. And of course, I'm gonna weave in insights related to task force management and how that can be optimized. Because in my experience, and this is not just specific to when I'm working in Times Square, New York City, or when I was working in Connecticut, I've been in Washington, D.C., I've also contracted with companies all across Europe and the world, and I've just seen it everywhere, a constant hidden agenda. So I knew I was going to <laughs> stir the pot a little bit here. But notice I didn't say have no agenda. I said have no hidden agenda. So we're gonna talk about how can we be a little bit more transparent. And I'm not saying you need to spill your beans to anyone and everyone, but there's a balance here. And I've seen in my experiences, people have a hidden agenda and it leads to teams being destroyed, people being demoralized, goals not achieved. So I got really passionate about talking about, okay, well, how can we do a different approach that's going to lead to a better team and ultimately a better task force? Know and apply your values. So we're talking now, last pillar of self-leadership within this first module that we're going into here today in the development session. This is a little bit embarrassing, what I'm about to tell you, but I have been known to swear in the, in the workplace. And I've done it more than once, I've done it more than twice, I've done it several times. I am working on it. And I'm not talking about like when you're with your buddies and you just swear that that's fine if you're at lunch or just joking around, but I've done it in inappropriate ways and I need to change that. So there was one day, it was actually we were in on a Saturday and we're, we're all stressed, we were, we were very busy and we were required to come in on the weekends because indeed we were so busy. And one of my colleagues, she said a comment. So we're all speaking and we're in our cubicles and then we're, we're standing up. And I was asking some questions. And I, I, was, I was asking, I was talking and I was being a bit chatty but I, I, I had uh, for the most part good intentions behind it. And my colleague, she said something along the lines of, how do you not know the answer to this? You don't know what you're doing. Jeff, just sit down, get back to work, be quiet, you'll figure it out. I misinterpreted that. Now, yes, it was rude, but I also misinterpreted it. Both were true at the exact same time. I was 22 years old at the time, I was this immature kid. So word for word, what, what I said to this colleague of mine, in front of the, the whole floor, I said, don't you be talking shit. What happened next, I, I, I literally thought I was dreaming. She, she charged me, she actually charged me, and two colleagues had to hold her back. I, I, I never thought I'd experience this. Here I'm a 22 year old kid, I'm working with people well over twice my age, and she, she, this woman just did not take crap from anyone, from anyone whatsoever. And she was like, you, no one talks to me that way. I, I, I was scared, I was, I, I, okay, I should not have said that. I should not have sworn. It was a huge thing. This, we're talking about corporate America. There's all this red tape, HR is involved, and there's all these interviews and all these things that are going on. Anything or anyone who even heard anything had to be interviewed. It was like a four or five month process, total disaster. And in fact, I probably should have been fired. My boss sat me down and he said, you actually probably should have been fired. Like, you're this 22 year old kid. Who, who do you think you are? You cannot come in and just start swearing it on the, on the work floor. But I see your potential. I stuck my neck out for you, and that's why you're still here. That was kind of him to do, he didn't have to do that. I probably should have been fired, especially because I broke workplace rules. But what I've done in these situations where I'm swearing is I'm leaving my values. So if someone is saying a rude comment, and okay, maybe they're having a bad day, there's a million different reasons why someone may say that. We all have bad days. And instead of staying true to my core, I then go down into the mud, and I've done this in situations, and I swear at them, and then I get in big trouble. So then what I'm doing is I'm then becoming a co-perpetrator of the situation. So don't go into the mud just because someone else is. I was recently in Frankfurt visiting my little brother in Germany. This was in the evening around 10.30, 11 o'clock. We had a couple beers, 
and we were heading back to the uh, hotel where we were staying. I, I snapped this photo because I saw the man on the right at the top of his lungs, like uh, in, insanely loud, screaming at the top of his lungs at the police officers. And I was really impressed because I have consistently made a mistake of having other people yell at me and then I will do something inappropriate back and then I become a co-perpetrator. And I'm, I was staying there for a moment just to the side and the, uh, uh, both of the police officers, the man and the woman, they were so calm and level and I was really impressed. I was like, I can really learn from this. They're, they're really great self-leaders. They were not going down into the mud with the guy and he was saying, he was speaking German, but it was pretty obvious that he was swearing and saying every insult he could possibly think of. But that was a really good example of not going into the mud. So well done to those uh, uh, excellent two police officers in Germany that I just recently saw when I was in Frankfurt. Creating leaders in others, so there's a five-step process here to empower others. My goal is to make this as practical as possible, not just giving you some random ideas, but how can we actually make it practical? Well, what I've seen working my experience, first of all, believe in them, the people that you're empowering on your team, a colleague, this could be someone working for you or even someone that you're working for, so it can go in any direction. Ask for their help. So I've seen a lot of people will actually assemble great teams but then they don't ask for help. And it, it's, I'm not blaming them. They're very busy. They've got a million priorities. But you have the right team members. Utilize their skills. Utilize their ideas. Listen to them. Ask for their help. Get, get them involved in these situations. Give them the right resources. Sounds simple, and it is, but I've seen many situations where people just don't have the resources. Yeah, sometimes it's a budget thing, but it can also sometimes be a communication thing or maybe even other factors as well. Encouraging the people that you're in, including in the task force to take responsibility for what they're working on. That's very important. And encouraging them along the way. But there's a the five-step process. I've used this in the workplace. I've also heard of other executives using this, and it did work well. But yeah, people just really didn't understand me or my approach. Maybe I was a bit too authentic for them. I probably wasn't their cup of tea. But I'm working on like, oh, it's okay. If they don't understand you, they don't understand you. Just be true to your core. I get a lot of anxiety when people don't understand me, and I, I need to work on that myself. So it's just something I wanted to include with the integrity. It's easy for me to get up here and say, yeah, I have integrity. But then what do you do when people are gossiping about you and stabbing you in the back and not uh, respecting your authentic authenticity, but actually doing the opposite, making fun of you and stuff like that. So it's also worth working on your own internal state and acknowledging your own gifts and talents even if the other people around you are not. And now we're going to funnel into how we can use these authentic leadership skills with the self-leadership and with the mindset into creating an optimized team in our task force so that we can start getting crap done and we can start kicking some butt and achieving goals. Why is it important? Well, what I just said, it leads to results. And that's why I enjoy sharing these kinds of things with people because it does indeed lead to better outcomes. So when we look at team building, we're looking at four key pillars, at least to start, and then I'm going to go into some more, but four to start. First of all, clarity is so crucial. Ambiguity will cause stress. So I found in my experience that a lot of times where stress is happening on the team is when certain people are not clear on what they need to do. And there can be a lot of factors for that. Maybe it was something that happened in the beginning. Remember I mentioned in the task force, it's very important to set the right kind of goals in the beginning. There could be other reasons as well. But that clarity is so crucial. This is one of the most controversial aspects of authentic leadership. But I really mean this. Authentic leadership is not about other people walking all over you. And it's not about letting people get away with everything. And I had several conversations being here, I've been here since Saturday, and it, I've had at least three different conversations where I've heard from the p people here at this incredible conference for IATI. They said people nowadays are not being held accountable. And, I, and I'm like, okay, I gotta mention that because I've, I've just heard so many people discussing this. So authentic leadership is not about always holding hands, let, let's all, yeah, be la 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 la. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm actually saying like, let's get stuff done. Let's hold each other accountable. Let's call each other out, even when it's not easy to do that. And in certain cases, you just have to stand up to people. I'm very happy I stood up to the corrupt company. 
there are certain cases where I could have picked my battles better in a lot of workforce situations, but I am very glad I stood up to that corrupt company. Sometimes you really do need to stand up for yourself, and authentic leaders do that. And I'll say this quickly, I've seen that when you stand up for yourself, people just don't like it. So then I'll get all these defense mechanisms and people will start attacking you and it does not mean necessarily that you're in the wrong. So sometimes you have to stand your ground and that's not easy. So I wanted to acknowledge that and have empathy for that as well. Also face the reality of these difficult situations. So holding others accountable, there's a lot there. It can be a very good, it can also be very, very challenging, but that's also what authentic leadership is about. And I did want to touch on that as well. It's not always easy. You have to just sometimes do it. And I mentioned conflicts can happen, but one way that we can perhaps prevent those conflicts is when we appreciate the differences in each other. And I've been in these international environments, especially living abroad, so I've, ha I've had to practice this with people who think a lot differently than me. 